Digimon from Flex now supports PEST version 12.3 including by the point parameterization. In this video, we'll do a brief walkthrough of the tutorial exercise and discuss some high level concepts of PEST. PEST requires several input files to be generated and a number of steps that must be completed in a specific order. Within Visual Modflow Flex, you can build the inputs, run PEST, and analyze results in a workflow GUI. The GUI guides you through the sequ sequential steps and prompts you for input at each step or provides reasonable defaults. This image shown on the screen shows you what the PEST workflow looks like, and we'll go through each of these steps in the following tutorial exercise. The sample project that's used for the tutorial exercise is based on one of the tutorial models that John Doherty uses in the PEST workshop. It has four parameter zones, it has two stress periods, and when you open this project in Visual Modflow Flex, you'll see the model's already been run for you. You select the maps, you can see the calculated heads, and changing to different output times, you can see the uh, effect of turning on the pumping wall. By clicking on the calibration charts, you can see that the calibration in general is not very good, and we hope that PEST will allow us to calculate a suitable set of parameters for matching these observed heads. To start PEST, you click on the PEST run node from the workflow tree, and the following screen will appear. As uh, shown in the earlier slide, you can see the PEST workflow is presented in this GUI here. It shows you which step you're currently at and all the steps you must follow in a specific sequence in order to reach the end results. At this step, you can define the weights for the observations and give uh, weighting to certain areas of the model over others or certain layers over others. The default weights for this exercise will be fine to proceed. When you're ready to proceed to the next step, just click on the blue arrow as shown in the top of the workflow tree here. Next, you must provide some parameters for PEST to adjust. By default, all your horizontal connectivity zones will be included, and in this screen you can specify the minimum and maximum values and add or remove certain parameter zones. For this exercise, we're going to include all four of the KX zones, and the default value for that parameter zone is shown here. We're going to apply some bounds for the PEST run so that it doesn't result in a wide varying range of values. So we'll enter a minimum value of 1 for each parameter zone, and a maximum value of 300. By default, the connectivity zones are also uh, transformed using log transformation. Click the next button to proceed, and after that you must define your pilot points. With the most recent version of PEST, the parameters are adjusted at individual pilot points as opposed to an entire zone. Let's take a look at how those points are distributed in this model. Again, we have four connectivity zones that are defined for this numerical model, and we have uh, several pilot points that are defined for each of these parameter zones. These objects are shown in the tree in the uh, top left here. Pilot points can be manually digitized and added in the 2D environment, or you can import these from shape files, spreadsheets, or text files. You can also distinguish between fixed pilot points, which would be those locations where you have confidence in the measured parameter values, such as locations where you've run slug tests, pumping tests, or field measurements, and those more arbitrary soft pilot points, which you've just inserted with the default initial value. So at the pilot point step, then, we must uh, choose each one of the points that represent specific parameter zones and define if any of these pilot points are fixed. We choose the object from the tree, add that as input for the pilot point as shown here. The lower half of the window here is where you specify if any of those points represent uh, hard or fixed measurements, as I mentioned for field locations where you want the value to remain fixed and not adjusted during the test run. By doing you just select the appropriate checkbox here and define the appropriate initial value in the value column. When you're ready to proceed, click on the next step. During a PEST run, the parameter values will be adjusted at individual pilot points, then interpolated to the modflow grid cells using Kriging. The cornerstone for Kriging is a variogram. 
And within the workflow, you can specify different types of variograms for each of the parameter formations. In addition, you can specify the minimum number of uh, points and the search radius to be used for each parameter zone. One thing we'll set up for this tutorial is set each of the property zones to be using log transformation. Parameter zone 2 represents the creek alluvium. For this variogram, we'll adjust the anisotropy to be 2 and the bearing to be 45 so that the direction of anisotropy corresponds to the direction of the creek. Note that the variograms used for KX zone 3 and 4 are relevant since there is only a single point that is used for these parameter zones. When you're ready to proceed, click on the next arrow. Bmodflex will then generate the creaking coefficients to be used for pest. The next step is to select the pest run type. It's generally recommended to run a sensitivity analysis before running pest. In a sensitivity analysis, parameter values are individually, individually changed to determine the effect on the model calibration and prediction. Results can give an indication of which parameters changes can have a significant impact on the model results. Those are the parameters with the highest sensitivities and which parameters have little or no impact on the model results. Those are the parameters with the lowest sensitivities are also called non-sensitive parameters. Generally, you should include the parameters with the highest sensitivity in the pest run in order to have the most efficient run time. For this example, we're going to run just pest right away. The next step is to select the regularization type. Vmod Flex offers support for Tikhonov regularization, SVD assist, or no regularization. In this exercise, we'll run no regularization, but you're encouraged to experiment with the other regularization options that are available within the software. At this step, you specify the pest control file contents, and you can also make adjustments to individual parameter values, conversions criteria, etc. The pest con control contents can be adjusted using a text editor, or you can directly modify any of the parameter values in the header at the top of the control file. Suggested to refer to the pest documentation to determine suitable ranges of different parameter values. After making changes to the pest control file, it's advised that you run pest check, and this is shown here. If there are any uh, errors that were found in the pest check, you'll receive a notice where you can open the pest check output file and assess the source of the error. Now you're ready to run pest. Click the next button to proceed. At this step, you can kick off the pest run by clicking the run pest button from the toolbar. You see the pest executable, executable load in a DOS command window where you can see the results of the pest run to, including the number of model runs the optimization iteration, and the corresponding value for phi, or the objective function, at each iteration. Depending on the speed of the computer, this tutorial exercise, the pest run, will require anywhere from three to five minutes. After 20 pest iterations, the pest run will complete, and you'll see a confirmation message, message shown in the run log here. You can then proceed to the next step and analyze the results from each of the pest output files. By default, you'll see the pest run record where you can have a look at all the parameter values, the sensitivities, the changes in objective function over different iterations. The pest.seo file contains the composite sensitivity observations, including the measured versus model values at each observation and the corresponding sensitivity. In the pest.send file, it contains a sensitivity for each of the parameter values. And lastly, the pest.res file contains the residuals for both the measured and model values and the weighted measured and model values for each of your observations. If you would wish to do further charting of these pest output files, you can click on the export to Excel button, and vmodflex will format the files into individual Excel spreadsheets so that you can pr provide efficient charting. An example of these charts is shown on the screen here. So after opening this Excel file, you'll see a different worksheet for each of the pest outputs, including uh, calculated versus observed. And with a few clicks, you can generate uh, your own charts 
with your own customized formatting and style settings. The residuals have their own worksheet as well, which you can then chart uh, using histograms or bar charts. And each of the parameter values and their changes over different iterations are also formatted into a worksheet, which with, again, a few most clicks, you can generate uh, charts over uh, consisting of the parameter values changing over different pest iterations. If you are satisfied with the parameter values that PEST calculated for your model, you can save those as inputs for a new model run in your project. Proceed to the next step and click on the Update Model with PEST Results button. When you do this, a new model run folder will appear in the Model Explorer tree as shown in the bottom left here. And the PEST parameter values can be displayed in the Flex Viewer Here you can see the distributed parameter values that PEST calculated for each model grid cell based on the pilot point parameterization. You can then proceed to run ModFlow with these PEST inputs for your connectivity zones and generate an updated set of results. After running Moflo with these updated parameter values, you can see the resulting heads and also the calibration charts. And you should now see that your uh, calculated, calculated versus observed fit is much better using the adjusted past parameter values. Let's go back to the PEST run now and try some of the different regularization techniques. We'll select Tikhonov regularization and use the default, which is preferred homogeneous regularization type. Again, you have an interface where you can adjust the pest control file. If you make changes on your own using a text editor, it's advised that you run pest check again. Proceed to the run pest window and launch pest. Using regularization, the pest run should complete much quicker than without regularization enabled. After pest completes the run, you'll see the results in the run log file here. You can then proceed to view the outputs from the different PEST files as shown on the screen here. The results from the PEST run can then be saved as inputs for another model run as you wish, and you can repeat this step over and over again to uh, define and manage a number of different numerical models and PEST run scenarios within your Visual Model Flow Flex project. So this concludes the tutorial video. For more information on PEST and Visual Model Flow Flex, please visit our website. From there, you can also download a 30-day trial version. Or for more information, please contact our sales team at sws-sales at slb.com. Thank you for your time.